Hey there, today I'm going to do this, the Nike Invincible 3. First, I'm going to show a short video of me running in them, then I'm going to put them on the turntable and list their specifications, then I'm going to review them, finally, I'm going to see if I can recommend them. I'm making this video because I have the Invincible 1 and I also have the Invincible 2. I was initially unsure about the Invincible, but the more I ran it, the more I enjoyed it. The Invincible 2 is nearly identical to the Invincible 1. I'll link some videos at the end. And uh, in this video, I want to see if the third version moves the shoe forward. This is going to be long, somewhat in depth. So there are chapter markers down below. So you can skip on through to the bits you might be interested in. So with that said, let's get going. For the running video, I took them to Pollardstown Fen, which is a, a wetland that began about 10,000 years ago here in Ireland, just beside the Curra in County Kildare, not too far from Dublin. And there's a lovely boardwalk that's about a kilometre long that goes through the wetland. And I love running on boardwalks. So let's go for a run around and see the shoes in action. enjoyed my testing on the boardwalk juggling the various shoes around and uh, now let's put the Invincible on the turntable and look at the specifications. Nike say that the shoe weighs 310 grams or 10.93 ounces. This shoe is a US 13, EU 47.5, UK 12, CM 31, BR 46. In this size it weighs in the left shoe 380 grams 13.4 ounces, in the right shoe 375 grams 13.25 ounces. It has a 40 millimeter stack height. It has a nine millimeter drop. Nike say this about the Invincible 3. With maximum cushioning support every mile, the Invincible 3 gives you our highest level of comfort underfoot to help you stay on your feet today, tomorrow, and beyond. Designed to help you keep you on the run, it's super springy and bouncy so that you can propel down your preferred path and come back for your next run feeling ready and invigorated. First, one thing that bears emphasis. The Invincible 3 is not an overhaul of its predecessor, Rather, it's an all-round enhancement of the Invincible 2's primary features. The heel and midsole are both slightly wider than before, which helps prevent your foot from rolling inward, while a smaller, more precisely placed heel clip provides extra support. 
Taller foam stacks than our previous version raise the bar on cushioning and comfort in a more sleek looking design. Let's review the shoe and see if what Nike says is true. Let's take a light on at the shoe and see. Um, there are some micro ventilation holes, but you'll see the light shining through the uh, upper of the fly knit. You can see it's more reinforced at the back um, and you can see the sort of threads running through it. It's uh, not the most breathable upper, but uh, I've had no problems running in the shoe. The upper on the shoe has changed. It's not as plush as before. The collar has a thin edge. The previous one, I sort of wondered that a lot of the padding seemed to be on the outside to me, but uh, there's uh, not as much cushioning as before. It's much more of a lightweight upper than the previous one. The laces are much flatter than before, and this opening here is much narrower. If I compared it to uh, the Invincible 2, it's wider there, and what actually happens is, across your forefoot as it comes across, the, the laces wants to go straight. So the narrower the opening, the easier it is to curve across the top of your, your foot. So I actually prefer this. And then in the, uh, in the Invincible 2, there's individual eyelets for the laces, but here there's single slots uh, going up the side of the uh, opening. The tongue is uh, less plush than before. It's kind of a, the theme of, of the upper, but they brought back the pass through. Uh, I'm not sure why they deleted it or what, but it's there so you can tie the laces through. There's a new heel tab up here, which there wasn't before. And a big change is this revised heel clip. So right now it runs right the way around the shoe. In the previous version, it didn't go as far around, but it was higher. So it's reduced down in height, but extends a little bit further. And I think that's helping with the stability of the shoe, tying more of the upper to the foam below. The liner in the shoe is removable. It's pretty much the same as before, but when you go below the level of the liner, now there's a piece of fabric covering the foam. If you took uh, the Invincible One, which uh, we saw it in half, or Liam saw it in half, and you look here, if I take out what's left of the liner and, and show you there, there is nothing on the foam other than the liner. And I think, uh, again, they've put a little bit of foam and again, it's tying the whole structure together. The midsole is the same Zoom X. It's, uh, it is indeed taller. It's uh, 40 mil as opposed to 36. It is uh, slightly wider here and it's slightly wider here. So there is a lot more foam. The outsole has a similar pattern done before. It's in two pieces, but because it now goes through to the, uh, there's holes, right through to the uh, midsole, you'll actually get a little bit more traction than the previous versions. My Invincible ones have about 300 kilometers, 185 miles on them. I wore these out really fast. They wore down very badly here. And uh, I was surprised I didn't get more than 300 kilometers out of them. That's usually when I stop wearing a shoe, but they were in pretty rough condition for that. There were some cracks in the foam. In terms of the Invincible two, well, these only have 21 kilometers or about 13 miles on them. So I can't really tell you about the wear and tear. The only reason I didn't run as far in the Invincible 2 was I used the Invincible 1 when I had a knee injury and they were super. They really helped me get back to running normally. And so I kind of use it as my disaster shoe. So uh, I, I, Luckily enough, my knees have been fine, so I haven't run in the Invincible 2 as much as I ran in the Invincible 1. So I can't really tell you how it wears, but on the basis that it's almost identical down the base, not great long life in the Invincibles. The shoe fits true for me. Toe box is nice and uh, roomy. It's almost identical in weight to the Invincible 2. I measured both of them. There's a taller stack height. It went from 36.5 to 40 millimeters, and it's slightly wider at the front and it's slightly taller, and that actually does make a difference. I'm gonna go down a little rabbit hole on stack height. So again, chapter mark is down below so you can skip on to the next section. But effectively, this is a taller shoe than this and its previous version. And when you look on the Nike website, it's accurate or it looks accurate in terms of the American website. It says there's a nine millimeter offset, 31 versus 40 in a men's US size 10. And it says there's a nine millimeter offset, 31, 40 for a women's 11.5. That makes sense because typically a woman's size shoe is about one and a half times bigger than a men's in terms of what is described up for the same size shoe. Now, when you go onto the website in, the, in Ireland, in the UK, and I also tried Switzerland, they say there's a nine millimeter offset, 3140 in a men's size nine, which makes sense because a men's size nine in the UK is more or less equivalent to a men's size 
10 in the US. And oddly enough, they, uh, they also give the uh, UK sizing on the Swiss side. But anyway, we'll roll on, but they also give exactly the same information on the women's side. So they say it's nine millimeter, 31, 40 for the women's size nine. And that can't be the case because the, essentially the shoe would be smaller and it scales up. So even though the design size of a UK or US men's size 10, UK nine would be 3140 because these are US 13, UK 12, it gets bigger still. So uh, yeah, I wish Nike were more accurate. I wish everyone was a little bit more accurate in the information they put on their websites. But either way, it's a taller shoe. In terms of design, well, I like the new aesthetic. Nike effectively I think they, they obviously have more foam down below, so there's increased stack height. So therefore, I think they've lightened the upper. They've also tried to reduce the visual bulk. So there's a horizontal line now, which draws your eye that way, rather than up and down. And you can kind of see that they've got a, uh, a painted line on the top, on the bottom, all to reduce the apparent size of this. And again, putting the line sort of puts it into two, two pieces visually. So it looks, like a, a less a less tall foamy shoe it isn't but that's the way they've designed it to make it look at and if you look at the rear you kind of see that it sort of curves off this side if i compare it to the previous version this is very flat at the back and so by chamfering it off i think they've saved a little bit of weight in the foam hence these shoes are pretty much the same weight i like the color of the shoe which is described as white football gray cobalt bliss and black there are four colors in the men's range and four in the women. They're not identical. I think that some of the blacks are the same, but it's the Nike Invincible. There'll be a huge range of colors to come. The real innovation in the design of this shoe doesn't come in the shoe. It comes in the box. Uh, I've criticized Nike in the past, I think when I was doing an Atreyu video, because they used to ship a box with the shoes came in, which was the same you see in a retail shop, inside it another giant box with a huge big gap in between. And now the shoes come in this one box You tear it open and the shoes are right there. There are also one of the innovations is there are no shoe fillers. So typically Nike ship their shoe with one of these. They're very handy for me because I use them to sort of plump out the, the toe when I'm making the, the videos and also when it's going around the turntables. But it's really good that there's a huge reduction in the amount of cardboard that they're shipping. There's a reduction, Nike, uh, Ikea have a statement they refuse to ship air, it's their kind of mantra, and Nike have tightened it all down, and that's all got to be for the good. So much for design, how's it feel like? Well, as soon as you put this on and you walk around the house, I walk around with one, uh, this one on one foot and the Invincible 2 on the other, I also ran the same way as you would have seen in the video, and you can immediately feel the difference. You immediately feel the increased stack on the foot, and it's about three and a half mil on the U. Yes, 10, UK 9, mine, it'll be bigger still, and you could feel it immediately, and I could feel a little bit of width in the forefoot, and uh, I could certainly feel more torsional rigidity. So there is more foam, but there's also less flex, and I think that's to be welcomed. It's still a much softer shoe than, well, not much softer, but it's softer than the Asics Gel Nimbus 25 I reviewed a couple of weeks ago. I'll put that video at the end. So it is the softest shoe around. What's the use case for the shoe? Well long easy days obviously i certainly would be using it if my knees were feeling injured i mean i just think it's superb when i feel injured down in the knee department and that that happens occasionally i've seen people run a marathon in the uh, invincible one and i certainly tested it for speed and there's a surprising turn of speed in the shoe and with the additional foam in the new shoe and the more torsional rigidity with the, all the small improvements add up to I think, yeah, it'll be a surprisingly fast shoe as well. The Nike Invincible 3 costs 189 euro and 99 cent, 180 US dollars, 169 pounds, 95 sterling, 260 Australian dollars. That's a slight increase in Euroland and maybe a slight increase in the UK, but it's still cheaper than the gel Nimbus 25 by Asics, at least in Europe. When it comes to the three, Nike seem to have dropped all talk of the injury prevention. Maybe they've realized that market isn't big enough. And what they say is that they made a shoe wider and taller with a revised heel clip, which they did. And they say that the target updates are designed for stability to help prevent your foot from rolling as you run. And does all that work? Yeah, it does exactly what Nike says it does. Should you buy the Nike ZoomX Invincible Run Flyknit 3? 
to give it its full and somewhat long-winded title that they, they seem to have shortened a lot in their publicity material simply down to Invincible 3. Well, I always like to have an Invincible shoe in my arsenal. It's my first resort when I reach my last resort knee injury. The Invincible 3 has more structure than the Invincible 1 and 2, but they're going to be significantly cheaper now that the 3 has been released. So when I made my video about the Invincible 2, I said there's pretty much no point in upgrading from the 1, the upper changed slightly. Now, Nike have made in their publicity a lot of talk about, you know, don't be fooled into thinking this is a big upgrade. Um, I think they must have got backlash after the last one. But anyway, if you like great big slabs of foam and you enjoy that, but you want a little bit more structure than the one and two, yeah, this is the shoe for you. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, it'd be great if you hit the like button. As always, there'll be lots of stuff down in the descriptions below and I'll happily answer any question you put into the comments. There'll be a big blue subscribe button popping up there and some red videos there. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.